All right then my friends, so now we can do quite a lot in terms of making queries to fetch data and related data as well, which is cool. But at the moment, all we can do is fetch the data. We can't add new data or edit the current data or delete data or any of that jazz. So I want to address that now by talking about mutations. And a mutation is basically a generic term in GraphQL for any kind of change that we want to make to the data, whether it be to add new data, delete data or edit current data. So the first thing we need to do is define our allowed mutations in the schema by making a new type, which is called mutation. And it's inside this type that we can then decide how users can mutate any data. For example, I might want to expose a mutation called delete game. And for that mutation, we need an ID argument to say what game should be deleted. We also specify the return type as well after a user makes this mutation, much like we did for the root queries. So for example, once a user deletes a game from the data, I might want to send back an updated list of all the games after that one has been removed. So I'd use an array of game objects right here. Okay, so that's the mutation defined, but we also need to make a resolver for the mutation as well. Inside our resolvers object, called mutation. So right at the bottom down here, comma, and then mutation, which is an object. And we just make resolvers in much the same way as we did for these, for these, etc. So we want to make a resolver called delete game right here. So let's do that. Delete game like so. And it also takes in the same arguments. So we have the parent, we also have the args over here and then context if we want it. So we don't actually need the first one, which is parent to delete a game, but we do need the arguments because we want the ID of the game that we want to delete. So inside here, oops, inside here, what we want to do is basically update the value of the games array, because that's what we're editing right here. We're deleting a game. So we want to remove one, right? So let's say that db.games is equal to something new, and that's going to be db.games.filter. And by the way, in a real application, you probably use a database, right? Like maybe MongoDB or something like that. So you would use the library for MongoDB to connect to that and just delete a game this way. We're just using local variables as data because then it's easier for me to keep the focus on GraphQL. All right, anyway, so dot filter. So we wanna go through this array and we fire a function for each game, which I'm referring to as G inside this array. And we want to return false uh, whereby the ID is equal to the ID on here. And we're returning false in that scenario because if we return false, it filters it out of the array and therefore the filtered array is not going to include that game that we want to delete. So we say g.id is not equal to args.id. So where they're not equal, it returns true and it keeps that in the array. Where they are equal, that's the game we want to delete, it returns false and therefore we filter it out the array. All right, so now we also need to return something and we specified the return type to be a list of games. So the updated games array. So all we need to do then is return db.games like so. All right, so let's save this and give it a whirl. So how do we actually make a mutation from the front end? Because when we make a query, we use this query keyword, give it a name and then specify what we want. Now with a mutation, it's very similar. We just specified that it's a mutation, not a query anymore. Then we can give this a name, so I could call it delete mutation. We can specify any variables that need to go into this query, and we do need a variable. That's going to be the ID, and that's going to be of ID type. And then inside here, we can specify what mutation we want to make, and that was called delete game. So let me get rid of this because it's automatically created it for us. And this should be ID instead to refer to this. So now we need to pass in the ID variable down here, and that is going to be two. So we're deleting the game with the ID of two. And remember, we get back as a return an array of games with that game deleted, so an updated version of it. So we can specify now what fields we want back. So I could say we want the ID of the game back, the title, and the platform. So let's give this a whirl, delete mutation, all right, so now we can see ID one and three and four and five, but no two because it's been deleted. Now, obviously when the server restarts, 
that is going to be there again because we reinitialized the variables and all that jazz. This is not permanent, this deletion. It's only while, you know, this current session is going on, if you like. But as soon as we restart the server, that's going to return. But like I said, you'll probably use a database where you'll have a bit more persistence than this. So anyway, now we've deleted a game, let's also try adding a new game. Okay, so now we've made this delete game mutation. Next, I want to try making a mutation whereby a user can add a new game. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to go to the mutation type in the schema and we need to add the mutation, which I'm going to call add game. And it's going to accept some arguments. So we do need parentheses, but we'll come back to those in a second. Now, as a return value, we're going to send a single game object back to the user, the one that we just created. So for the arguments, of this mutation, we need to basically grab all of the fields that make up a new game, minus one of them, the ID, because we don't want the user to decide the ID of the new game that they add. Instead, we're going to generate a random ID in the resolver later for this mutation. But we still need the game title and maybe the game platform, maybe the game price if there is one, basically any property that makes up a new game. So we could add each of those fields as different arguments inside here, or we could make a new special input type in our schema, which allows us to group together several arguments into one type. And then that can be used as a single argument elsewhere, like in this mutation. So the way we do that is by coming down here and first of all saying input instead of type which says to GraphQL that this isn't an actual type of data, but more of a collection of fields that we can use in a mutation as a single argument, for example. So inside this, then we can choose what fields we want this input to have and also the type of those fields. So I've said right here, we need two properties, the title, which is a string, and also the platform, which is a collection of strings or a list of strings, and they're both required. We don't want to add in the reviews because we're not making a review. We're just making a game. And then later, if you were to have a review, you would associate it with a particular game. We don't need to do that right here when we're adding a game for the first time. But now what we can do is we can say, okay, this mutation takes in a variable called game, and that is going to be of type add game input and it's required. So when we're making this mutation from the front end, it's going to require us to add a game variable, which looks something like this, an object with these two properties. Okay. So now we have that mutation sorted. We can go back to the index file and we can add that mutation right here after delete game. So I will call this add game. And we're going to take in the args argument. So we don't need the first one, which is parent. So underscore for that, then args. And the reason we need that is because the game property is going to be on the arguments because we're sending that from the front end and on that game is going to be the title and platform properties. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to make a new game object and add it to the game array, right? So we can make the object first of all by saying let's game equal to an object. Then we're going to spread out. So dot, 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 args, dot, game. And it's dot game because that is the name of this variable. And on that will be those two properties, the title and the platform. So we're adding those two properties to the new object. And then the reason I'm spreading that is because we also need an ID property, which we need to randomly generate. Now, you might be better off using some kind of random UID generator library or something like that. I'm going to use the math object to generate this for the sake of our tutorial. But we're going to say math.floor, then math.random. And this generates a random number between 0 and 1 in decimal format. And then we'll times that by 10,000. So what this will do is generate a random number between one and 10,000, and it will have decimal points as well. But then what we're doing is flooring that so it becomes an integer, okay? And then we'll convert it to string like so. So we have our ID property. We also have the other arguments that we passed along, and we have the new game object now. We just need to push that to the game's array. So we can say, let me come back up a line, db.push. And then we're going to push on, in fact, not db.push, db.games.push to push onto the games array. And we push on the new game. Awesome. And then finally, we return that new game that we created. Because if we go to the schema, we can see we return a game type. All right. So that is pretty much it, my friends. So let's try this from the front end. Okay, then. So let me just copy this. And then we'll go over here and paste it in. And we're going to 
call this one add mutation. We also need to pass in the ID. No, we don't in fact, do we? We need to pass in a game object and that is of type add game input, like so. All right, so now we need to specify that the game is required here, like so. And then this is called add game instead. All right, so now down here, we need to pass the variables in. So remember, we need a game property, and that is an object. And inside the object, we have the title. So we'll just say a new game, very original, right? And then we also need a platform, and that platform is going to be an array. And inside here, we will say switch and PS5, like so. So remember, it returns the new game back and we're requiring these three fields from the returned game. So let's try this, add mutation. And you can see now we get this random ID 263, the title and the platform. Awesome, so that's worked. And now I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna just require all of the games right here. So games like so, we don't need these anymore, just so we can see an updated list of games and we'll get the title of each one. And we don't need these parentheses. Let's run this and you can see now a new game. So it's been pushed on to the array, awesome. So in the next lesson, we're gonna look at one more mutation and that is to update existing data.